I love the interactivity of the bridge, the steps that I'm walking down to come down to the sunken fire pit area. I love the combination of waterfalls. You've got a very different style falls here than we do coming into the pond up there. I love the shape of the pond and I especially love the stack slate sphere. We've got a landing area which comes out from this door right here. And I'm told that the barbecue is going to sit right there and there will be a landing or a pad out here. I am walking on the little patio and there will be a bridge element running right through here. The bridge will come across the pond here and then we will take some stone steps and snake them back this way. Now, as you walk across the bridge, you come here and kind of meander this way, bringing you down to a sunken fire pit, which is where I'm standing on the edge. As you pan this way from the back side of the pond, the pond will overflow at a negative edge somewhere right in there and it'll almost be like a little three four foot stream into a waterfalls which will sit here and then our basin is going to sit right in here along the edge kind of nestled into this sunken fire pit area which will be a bluestone chip fire pit the reason this thing is so complicated and, and tricky is because it's right off the edge of the pond building a waterfall right off the edge of the pond is so much harder than that biofall set back two to three feet getting a drop and then creating another drop. The reason it's hard is because I'm forced to stack rocks to get up to the height I'm at. Even this rock here, as tall as it was, isn't as high as the biofalls, which requires, you know, that would be my frame rock and then I'd have another frame rock in there. It's just kind of pieced in this group, these granite boulders together and it can get complicated with granite boulders because they're so round. None of them are tall enough for the, the height that we want and they can look a little weird when put in here. Now I'm not too worried about those two which are really sticking out to me right now because there's gonna be a big sheet of water that comes over hiding what's supporting that rock. The ultimate goal with this is to have another little flat pancake rock there, some type of rock here to split it, another big rock sitting on here, and then like a weep area that comes and gets this rock wet. So big rock here, and then like a little tributary thing that comes down, really just getting that rock wet, and then we'll get another big one in here. That's the goal, that's what I'll tackle tomorrow. Wish me luck, but it's always easier to set that biofalls three to five feet back rather than right on the edge. So when you have that opportunity, push that thing back. I'm telling you, based off of experience, it makes so much more sense. folks thought the camera died whoops so anyways we need to establish a bottom elevation for our the bottom of our bottom step what i mean by that is i want to make sure that the bottom of my last step entering the fire pit area okay follow me follow me will be at the appropriate elevation so that i can have a um i don't want to how do i want to say this 
So basically I'm reverse engineering the elevations coming down from the bridge element. So I took an elevation or shot that with the transit, figured out the rise of all of my steps, multiplied it by however many I need based on the average grade change down here. So what I did is I went down two and a half feet from the top of that bridge. So that when you walk out of the bridge, it's completely flat and it leads you right to that top step, which will be at the same elevation as the bridge. Then I figure out the six inch riser for each step coming down. And then I needed to know what the elevation of my fire pit would be. So I didn't want to be in between steps and then have either a step up or a step down or like a three inch grade change or something strange. So I wanted to make sure that I had a nice even number uh, in multiples of sixes. What I did was is we figured out that the best elevation for this sunken fire pit was going to be 30 inches below the top of bridge. So what I did is I excavated out 30 inches, well actually 32 because I want to get a couple inches of base material underneath those steps as well as to compensate for the excavation for the bluestone chip patio which is where I'm standing. I hope that makes sense but as you watch the the rest of the video you'll see what I mean by that. to show you guys a couple other tricks and just showed up to this job second day out here and huge opportunity to make an improvement and just wanted to kind of show you what I was thinking while we're doing it so we've got Ryan and Matt over here kind of working on connecting this pond down to our pondless area there and so we have this little chute what happened is it was super easy the original excavation went from there to here and then from here to here and ultimately what was going to happen as this pond filled up and water started running it was going to look like a little bowling alley moving from one area down to the other and because we have the liner more importantly because we have the real estate where Ryan's at just by pulling that liner back excavating out all the way to his knees then back in this way allows us to then get a sweep in this stream creating a whole lot more movement and a whole lot more aesthetic pleasure if you will <laughs> just making it look a whole lot better maybe even giving us the option to put a rock in the middle and let that water move around that rock rather than just a very narrow three-foot strip in there Okay, so this project turned out just beautiful. I love the interactivity of the bridge, the steps that I'm walking down to come down to the sunken fire pit area. I love the combination of waterfalls. You've got a very different style falls here than we do coming into the pond up there. I love the shape of the pond and I especially love the stack slate sphere over on the back end of the pond. It just turned out beautiful and gorgeous. The landscape is tying everything together. I would say there's definitely an appropriate sized berm for 
such as low waterfalls. It just turned out beautiful. I love the negative edge and the stream effect over here. It just turned out gorgeous and I couldn't be more proud of our team. Hopefully you thought this episode turned out fantastic. We sure as heck did. Or leave us a little note in the comment section below. Like the video if you can. Otherwise, give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Let us know what you thought about that as well. Till next time, we'll see you later. Oh,